Hi, everybody. I'm Todd McKim, along with the coach, and welcome to the inaugural Mike Bellotti Show as we kick off the centennial celebration of Oregon football. The Ducks coming off a big victory over Utah. We'll have all the highlights, a couple of uh, special features for you as well, and we will be joined later in the program by, uh, with one of the stars, uh, Ricky Whittle, as he had a sensational game in his uh, opener to the 1995 campaign. Well, we'd like to welcome the coach, uh, Mike Bellotti. Uh, coach is suffering with a little cold, and it's been warm in here today, so he's got the uh, sans the coat look, which is fine with us. But first of all, congratulations. That was, a, that was a real good win for a lot of reasons. One, it was on the road. Two, it was against a good opponent. And three, you had to overcome a lot of obstacles, some of which were created by your own team to win the game. Well, thank you, first of all. I mean, every win is a good win. Certainly, it's nice to start on the road uh, and go in and win a game when you have to. I think that we overcame some adversity. We talked about it. We made our own mistakes. We didn't act like quite the experienced team that we were, but we did battle back in the second half, held them scoreless, uh, put the ball in the end zone, uh, had a young man step up as a kicker punter for us that hadn't played a lot, and, and overall, it was a very gratifying win. You go over to Utah, and uh, the opening drive of the ball game, boy, your team looked like it was in midseason form. Zipped right on down the field for the touchdown. And then on the first defensive series, three and out for the Utah offense. And then one of the big plays of the game, special teams, when Dan Pulsifer, their punter, uh, on his own, it wasn't a called play, ran for 71 yards. That seemed to change the complexion of that game early in, in the first quarter. Well, there's no question. Uh, you know, we had a a regular call our phones were down which was a problem because generally the call for the punt return comes through me to the sideline we couldn't get the call in so we made a call uh, and then we tried to alert them to the fact that it was a fourth and one situation which basically puts us in a safe idea we didn't get that communicated across uh, our players probably should have known the situation anyway but as such once he bobbled the ball he looked in saw that there was an opening ran by several of our players who were involved with the return and then we couldn't find him we could not find him in the sea of red and I knew we were in trouble. And then after that, the team comes back down uh, later in the quarter and an interception for a touchdown on the final play of the first quarter. And it's 17-7 at one point, Utah with the, year, uh, with the lead. But I thought at that point, your team came back and scored a field goal. And I thought that was very important for your team to come back, answer, and show some poise. Well, it was what I expected of a veteran team. It, we made some mistakes. It cost us. We were down. But we did not stop playing hard. We didn't give up. We didn't roll over. And obviously, that's very important to us, to our success in the future. And I think we learned something. And, uh, and we played hard on all aspects. And we knew that we'd made our mistakes. We had, we had not been stopped in reality. And that was obviously sort of frustrating when you stop yourself or you contribute to your own demise. But our kids came back, and I think they regrouped very well. Offensively, 530 yards in a season opening game against a team that, although they lost a lot of players, was number one in the Western Athletic Conference a year ago. And defensively, only 231 yards allowed. And that included the 71 yards on the punt return. So I, I guess in a lot of the phases, you did so many good things. I think, obviously, our offense uh, came to play. We did a lot of things. We probably threw the ball a little bit more than I would have wanted. But we were behind a great deal of the game. Uh, Gang Green, I think. Two field goals is all they gave up, 160 yards, as you said, and, and 70 of it came on the one run. I think they played excellent defense. The more they were on the field, the better they got. Uh, we got good pass rush at the end, and I think early on it was sort of disjointed. The offense was on the field, I think, all of the first quarter, it seemed like, and the defense never really got a chance to get on track. And we were moving the ball, but we weren't scoring or taking advantage of some of the opportunities. We had a lot of people open, uh, a little bit of pressure, a little bit of miscues here and there, but again, we won the game, so we can talk about that in a more in a positive manner. You mentioned the 49 passes or whatever, but yet your offense had balance when you look at the final statistics because you ran the ball 44 times, 93 snaps for your offense. It was tough for me to look at the film this morning. <laughs> I didn't get through it all, and, and uh, it is nice. And I think that what we're doing now with the offense, certainly at the end, it was very important to run the football. We needed to take time off the clock. We, we had worn them down a little bit, and we were establishing our control of the line of scrimmage, knocking off the ball. Ricky Whittle came in, and, and obviously we were going to put the ball in his hands. He did a great job with it. And uh, I, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't run out the clock at the end. We had a little bit of a miscue there, but I think we could have. And uh, that was very encouraging to me. You've got to be relieved. You got the first game over with. Yeah. Well, th there's, there's no question. There's a lot of relief. Uh, I used to say at some I, one time when I won my first game at Chico, I said that was an ugly win. There are no ugly wins. <laughs> Every win is good. Well, and we're going to show you a lot of the highlights coming up in just a minute. But first of all, let's check out the Pac-10 scoreboard and see how 
the rest of the conference teams fared yesterday. You can see the big victory by Oregon over Utah. Oregon State got its first win of the year by defeating Idaho 14-7. Flip the page, you can see Washington come from behind win at home against Arizona State. And Arizona, four touchdown passes by quarterback Danny White in a convincing victory over Pacific. We'll see Pacific here at Autzen Stadium later in the year. San Diego State, that might be the surprise of the day as they wallop California 33-9. Stanford, a big victory against San Jose State. California, as we saw, UCLA, very impressive victory over Miami of Florida. We'll see the Bruins in the Rose Bowl in two weeks. And Washington State on the road gave up a couple of late touchdowns to Pittsburgh and lost their opener. Maybe the youths were being kind to you, Coach, to start the ball game because on the toss of the coin, not only did they give you the ball, but they gave you the wind as well. Yeah, I, I was very happy about that. We had, if we didn't get the ball, I wanted to, to kick with the wind right off, and we got it anyway, and the ball. So. And a good start for the Ducks is uh, they start their opening series after the touchback into the end zone at the 20-yard line, and they march on down the field. Let's pick up the highlights as the Ducks taking on the youths of Utah. You see a good crowd, kind of some uh, thunderstorms in the area, a little lightning as well. The Ducks with the new green pants and those road uniforms. Nice look. The uh, solid yellow helmets. New turf they have with their sport grass. It's a unique combination of polyurethane, I believe, and grass. And of course, you see those green pants for the Ducks. The first time we've seen those. Nice look. So the opening kickoff, Dan Pulsifer booms it deep, and the Ricky Whittle takes the knee and the touchback. So here you start, first and 10 at the 20. This is a nice drive to start your season. Nice drive. And on this first one, Tony had a flanker a little bit late, but decided to run, got a nice uh, game. He's got a good feel for the pocket and win the run. Third and two play here. You were very successful. Four for four on third downs in this drive. Josh Wilcox does a good job of positioning himself there to catch the ball, and, and uh, Tony puts it where he needs to. Kevin Parker got the start at tailback. Does a nice job on his own playoff tackle there. Then again, we hit him outside, we get him one-on-one -on -one and get pick up the first down. Next play we see is a second down and eight. And running the fake uh, zone, a stretch pass, we'll bring the tight end across. Tony makes a nice touch pass, hits Josh, and gets out of bounds there. Take another look at it low. Doing a lot of play action this year, again, with the shifting emotion, trying to get the matchups that we want. I think it's been very effective, and I think it will continue to be so. So Josh had a big night, six receptions, and that was his first one of the ball game. A little bit later on, Tony back to pass. This is another third and eight. Nice job by Tony stepping up in the pocket. Damon Griffin makes a clutch catch uh, to get us that first down. But again, the nice thing about the pocket, too, is we can run by the tackles and we keep the interior of the pocket secure so he has a place to step up into. Nice catch, too, by Damon, who's got the New Jersey number this year. We fake the reverse here, and it works very well. Uh, pull it, got them in man in the corner left. Did a good game by Ricky. We're actually trying to set up the reverse for later on. The actual fake reverse worked better than the reverse itself. And Ricky with good, solid effort there as he's uh, now into the ball game. And after a couple of plays, third down and goal from the five. Boy, this is very well executed. Key play, what we call crack screen. We fake the draw inside, hold the linebackers. The splitting comes down and cracks. Tossi gets out there. He's a big load, does a great job in the old field. And the timing is great between the back and the guard so that Ricky can use that block, walks into the end zone. Indeed he does. And Matt Belden into attempt the extra point and bangs it through. And on the first possession of the ball game, the Ducks march 80 yards for the touchdown and lead it 7 to nothing. Defense comes on. This is a third and four play. We're in a play fake. Uh, we lose contain a little bit, and we got much better this as it went along. But great play by Alex Molden coming up to stop him from getting the first down. And here's the big play we talked about with the punter. You see Bobbles the snap. Bobbles the snap, and again, you see two, a couple of our guys running out to cover their men, and then we lose him. We, we do not know where he is. The only guy who saw him was the return man, and there was about five red jerseys to block him. So Dan Pulsifer, the punter, Pretty good speed for a he, punter. He ran pretty well. He may play another position. They may change him after this they, game. They might. So it's 7-7. Seven to seven. You had had the momentum. You had had a good start. And then now the crowd kind of gets back into things. Drop play to Juan Johnson. And, and we were a little bit too aggressive. Our linebackers there, and they hurt us on this play several times. We dogged right into it, but we ran by the play. Next play is second down and eight. That, that ball, unfortunately, was so far under thrown that we lost track of it. Uh, I thought Lamont was in a pretty good position, but he bumped him. And a 
third and seventh play here down by the goal line. Lamont Woods, nice play. Nice job. Coming back after the penalty to make this deflection. He played him tight, knocked the ball away. I think it's a great job. So yeah, sort of hand fighting there, and one is actually pushing off. Maybe she didn't want to catch that ball. But... Nice play. So Pulsifer in, and at this point, it's Dan Pulsifer 10, Oregon 7. He's got a touchdown, a field goal, and a point after. So the uh, Ducks get it back and uh, try to get some more points on the board near the end of the first quarter. We come back with a play action pass to Blake Spence, and Blake shows great speed here. He's, he's, always, he's a threat when he catches the ball. It's nice that we have two tight ends we really can go to. Low angle here. A big Jeez. gain initially for 59. They, they caught a holding uh, play here on the rickets. You might be able to see Which it on the left. Which didn't really look quite. It's right there, and I don't see any holding. He's pushing him. Uh, nice play fake by Graziani to help set that play up. So they mark off the penalty. It brings the ball back to the midfield stripe. First down and 10. We come back with a similar look, and now we hit uh, Damon Ricketts on a slant in the weak side. At this point, Tony's been the razor sharp. He's hitting almost everything he throws. He's doing a great job. I think that was a first down, short yardage, first down playoff tackle. That was a fourth down play, yeah. yeah. You got the first down. Keeps the drive alive. Goes back to Ricky. Yeah, we, we miss a couple blocks downfield. Again, the timing, screen timing has to be right there. If not, it's easier for the uh, DBs to play that. Again, Ricky on another short yard as we get up. That's our jump play. I didn't need to jump, but we got the first down. So this is the final play of the quarter after some miscommunication with the officials on the clock and proves to be disastrous. This is Brandon Dart, 97 yards for the interception and touchdown. Unfortunately, we got uh, a miscue on protection on the back side. Tony's wrapped up just as trying to release the ball. The guy was actually open in the end zone, but we don't get it. And once he broke down the sideline, Neil said to me, I think we're in trouble, and I, I think he was right. So at the end of the first quarter, Utah has a 17-7 lead, and this is the drive we alluded to earlier where they have all the momentum, yet your offense comes right back, and as we pick up the highlights, doesn't necessarily get a touchdown, but at least regains some of the momentum and gets a score. It was important, I think, that we established something there. We made some mistakes, and it cost us, but we didn't give up. We didn't lay down. Great play fake here. Hit Blake Spence, and again, he shows some great run after catch. Uh, as I've said before, it's nice to have two tight ends. It's a great weapon for us. And Tony makes a great fake and quick throw that catches Blake going down the seam. That was a tough catch coming back using just the hands. Tough catch, and then he takes the hit and, again, keeps on ticking. So. Good to see. Big gain for the Ducks of 20 yards. Next play is a second and seventh play in Utah territory at the 43. It's a little half roll sprint out to Pat Johnson. He's getting some respect from the corner so he can throw the out against him. Good protection up front there. Tony pulls up, puts the ball right on the money, and Pat squares up and makes a move. He's going to pick up some yards after the catch. One of the uh, nice features of this offense under Al Borges is, uh, and you did this as well as offensive coordinator, spread the ball around. This is a, a tight screen back to our tight end off of one of our play fake looks that we put in a couple weeks ago, and we've worked it really worked well today. Sort of sneak the tight end back across. Again, nice touch throw by Tony. He's, he's got great touch. You see it several times in the game. He just drops the ball in there over defenders, puts it in the right place. Great block by Paul Wiggins there, too, coming out. So a gain of 14. The Ducks have first and goal. This is a second and goal. Oh, Tony liked to have that one back. Yeah, that was frustrating. He, he pulled the triggers a little bit too early on that. Had Pulo for a touchdown. Probably we had to settle for a field goal. So at least you came back. You scored at 17 to 10. Early moments, second quarter. And the defense takes over. Good I job, thought from Grace. this point on, Coach, excuse me, yeah. the defense really controlled the play. They did. You know, the, the whole day, when you look at it, that's a great job. We get the blitz off the backside. Uh, Des Berg gets out there. We'd like to see him scoop that and run with it. But, but he might have uh, run the wrong way. I'm, I'm glad we got the ball. <laughs> he was headed the wrong direction. Yes, yes, yes. We don't want Jim Marshall returning here. I think that was Kenny Wheaton coming off the edge on a, sort of a corner blitz. And he was in one of our inside positions in our uh, one of our nickel packages. And again, we're excited about getting the ball. Yeah, big turnover. And immediately, first play, touchdown. We go right at him, first play, play fake again. Great touch, uh, nice catch by Josh getting in the end zone. Uh, and we're back in the ball game. See the play fake, the line pushing down. 
You get one on one back here, and Josh goes against the grain. Tony just floats it over 46. Josh keeps his balance to get in the end zone. Nice play, and with the point after. Now, I think on the ensuing kickoff is when Matt got hurt. It uh, looked like he got shaken up and came off the field. Actually, unfortunately, he, he, did, he just did it kicking the ball. He pulled the quadricep muscle fairly severely, was no contact at all, which is, doesn't happen very often. But again, as you said, too, I think our defense came to life here. Uh, and that, that was an unfortunate thing. Uh, Isaac walked a slip and uh, ended up, they called it piling on. He didn't really get on him. But we can't make those kind of mistakes, can't give up that opportunity. We had sort of a momentary lapse here. They catch us going down the middle. This and is their they, best sustained drive of the night. Yeah, and they hit us with a trap, and, and uh, they were getting off on the ball a little bit. We come back, though, again. Uh, Bailey and Schmidt there coming in, stop that one. You see they beat the blocks, and a nice double-team tackle. Always like to see that ball carry going the other direction happened quite a bit. Here's nice Johnson. play. Troy Bailey, Rich Rule, uh, Reggie Jordan, all of them. That's Gang Green right there. Nice read by Bailey to get out there and seal and force the ball carrier back in. Back into the pursuit. Okay, when Rich Rule gets his arms around you, that's pretty much it. So this is a third and 14. Jones flushed. This ends up uh, resulting in, officially, it should be ruled a sack as he goes out of bounds. Loss of six, but Pulsifer, strong leg. Strong leg, nice kick, and I thought we kept him back far enough to be a tough field goal, but he made it. 48-yarder, that ties his career long. So now here we are at the end of the quarter, trying to get something going, get some points, a short pass, and a 15-yard penalty. Face mask, flagrant uh, face mask there helped us. <clears throat> One of the few calls we got. <laughs> Nice job by Tony here, whether it's same pass we hit Dameron. They had covered it, comes back to Blake Spence on the backside. Good heads up play by him, and nice run by Blake after the catch again. Fortunately, though, uh, after this play, the drive will stall, but still a good field position. You see Tony pumps there, realizes it's covered, comes back. Blocking holds up very well, and he sees the field very well. Blake Spence. makes a move inside, got to protect that ball a little bit better. You don't see it out quite away from his body like that. You had there. to punt, uh, Coach, but then they were in a punt formation. Bad snap, and Pulsifer kind of saves their day a little bit and, and gets some of the lost yardage back. Right. But you've got a great opportunity here at the end of the half, but you also know you don't have Matt Belden in the ballgame. Right. So uh, describe we, this for us. Well, it was tough. I, I wanted to go to the end zone. Uh, we tried a couple times. I was concerned a little bit. Josh Bidwell has not been doing that much place kicking for us. And unfortunately, comes in and, and uh, is not quite as prepared mentally as he probably was. We are ready for the third quarter of highlights. So Oregon trailing at Utah 20 to 17. The only point score the rest of this ball game would be by the Ducks. Let's see what Gang Green can do to start this third quarter. Nice sack by Bryant Jackson. Got pressure from Troy Bailey. Forced him up in the pocket. <laughs> and BJ beats the center. Comes in. Makes that. Wraps up and hangs on. That's a nice job. And again, I thought our defensive line took control of the game. The more they played, the better they got. And they wore the Utah line down. Jones back to pass oh. again. B.J. bangs him right as he throws it. What a play by Alex. He did that a couple of times. Super job. That ball was tipped just slightly, and Alex almost had a pick. He, he's got that great anticipation. Come back offensively. Kristen McLemore's first catch. He did not play in the first half. Came back and made his presence known. And this is a patented McLemore catch here, going up in the air, using his body to shield the defender. Tony puts the ball right on the money. Gets both feet down in bounds. One foot down in bounds, all you need in college, so we'll take that. Good to see him back after the back injury suffered. Ricky, nice patience there. Nice patience, nice block by Tassi. Moves the pile, and Ricky cuts off that block, gets up field. Third and three. Again, key down here. Tony threw that off his back foot, which is not good, but he felt a little bit of pressure. Uh, Kristen slides back behind the linebacker, you can see and uh, makes a nice catch coming back for the ball. Keeps the drive alive. And well, here's Josh Bidwell. And I guess during halftime, he loosened up that right leg a little bit and banged it through from 42 yards. Big play, big play. It wasn't the prettiest field goal, but may have been maybe the biggest of his career, certainly of mine so far. And, <laughs> and uh, I think the entire team was very happy for him and for all of us. And then again, Dan Green starts to come back and exert itself. Uh, the dominance, we do a great job here. You see guys on the ball, Rich Rule, 
and then a host of tacklers coming back and again making sure that guy goes the wrong direction. Pressure Bryant. again. Bryant Jackson, nice job. Bryant is quick. He, again, he does a lot of things like Salila Malapiai did. Paul Saperta booted away to Patrick Johnson. Uh, almost disaster and then almost a touchdown. Almost disaster and then if he can just keep that balance right there, he's gone. <laughs> That little bobble probably helped set it up a little bit, although I think had he got it clean, uh, he may have been able to a little bit sooner. Come back again. Ricky following Tossi and then bouncing it outside on his own. Almost breaks this one. Does a nice job of delivering a blow to the DB as opposed to the other way around. Same play again. You see him following Toss. Give Toss a little push there. Toss, take care of those guys. Uh, Blake Spence doing a nice job staying on the block. Making some people miss. And again, lowering his pad level and meeting that force. Unfortunately, uh, Graziani pressured right here. Deep. Uh, this is close to a touchdown. Yeah. We'll, we'll try to get a better look on the end zone camera. Hard to see on this one. Uh, Pat catches the ball. Uh, we want it. It was a, a, like a play and go where the guy fakes it underneath route and then goes deep. The timing was off a little bit. He has Pat. He has to throw off balance uh, a little bit late, but he puts the ball up there. Uh, again, Pat catches it, and it looks like his feet may have been in bounds. Very difficult to tell. Tough to tell. So uh, the Ducks have to punt it away, and Utah trying to get something going offensively, but not much doing there. Great job by Kenny Wheaton coming up on the outside. Uh, nice job again, breaking up the pass by Alex Molden. And excited about it, too. <laughs> well, they don't throw in his direction very no. often anymore, do they? Rich Rule, I mean, uh, Jeremy Asher knocked that down. Good heads up play. We talked about when we dog, we've got to keep our hands up in there and you did a nice job that time. Coming back with a, a uh, play action crossing route to Kristen. Nice touch again by Tony. You can see here a play action fake. Uh, we get out. We need to be a little bit more aggressive, create the pocket there. And then I think uh, number 20 thought he had an interception. All of a sudden the ball just continued to go over his head. Kristen gets it. Big play. Might have, oh, no. out of bounds might have been out of bounds. Might have been. And Josh tries a, another field goal here. And this one just missed. I thought yeah. it was going through, but it just the stayed to the right. Well, the Ducks tied with Utah entering the fourth quarter. You like to go on the road and be the better team in the fourth quarter. And that was the case on Saturday night as the Ducks control the final period of play. As we pick up the action, the Ducks have the football. Third and six at the 42. Big first down. Big clutch catch by Josh Wilcox. He again, positioned his body well, did a nice job. And that was a big play. And Ricky busts a, a uh, counter. We're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage now. Control it a little bit. Uh, nice play fake but there by Graziani, but we're really giving the ball to Ricky up inside. He gets the ball five consecutive plays, either by running or passing. Dump the ball off to him right there. Little delay underneath. He got a little bit of work in there at the end. <laughs> here he bounces it outside, follow Fulo's block. Nice job of not going out of bounds, too, which is very, very important. We're run, trying to run out the clock at this point, too. Use up the time on the clock. Maybe you could explain the, maybe Ricky could later on, this a little dragging motion by the Utah defenders at the end of this play. I'm not sure exactly what this was, but it was after the whistle. Yeah, I, I thought that was a little bit in excess. <laughs> Second down and five. Throw back to Kevin Parker, and Kevin slips his way down to about the five-yard line where it is first and goal. The next play we see is second and goal. Utah on the blitz. Ricky breaks a tackle after a, a penalty, actually, and goes the distance, 15 yards for the touchdown, the go-ahead points, and that is our play of the day. Play of the day here is 30 trap. The nice thing about that play was we got him in man-to-man -man coverage. So they were doing this. These people were covering here, and their backers were coming off the edge. They were trying to get it. Uh, we run the trap play. We're going to base block this, and we're going to influence, trap this guy. Ricky cuts back, breaks a tackle right here, runs into the end zone. Great play in that situation. Great offensive call. All right, let's take a look at it from down low. Coming right at you. As you can see, he breaks a tackle there. And then once he broke it, because, again, of their pass coverage and their dogging, he walks into the end zone untouched. Nice job. So the go-ahead points, you finally regained the lead. You've gotten over the mountaintop, so to speak. Bidwell adds the point after, and it's 27-20 on the first drive of the fourth quarter. About 11 minutes to play. Again, 
Defense taking over, BJ getting penetration, Rich Rule on the tackle. I thought our overall team conditioning showed up there. That was a warm night. I was worried and concerned about the elevation and all that, and I thought our players responded. Our offense was on the field a lot. Our defense was on the field as much as they needed to be in the second half and did a great job. So Paul Safer has to boot it away, and you're always worried about whether he'll just keep this thing. But a good punt. I thought your uh, punt return team did a nice job of giving Patrick some room to maneuver, catch the ball and run. We held up well. Pat is, is totally unafraid to hit it up in there, which is great. I mean, I'm excited about him, obviously his speed, but uh, he has uh, some sheer guts. Uh, that punt returning is, is an amazing deal, and, and uh, catching that ball, the guy's bearing down on you, but he's got speed, he's tough, he hangs on to the football, and uh, I think he's going to be a great punt returner for us. Unable to move the football, Utah unable to move it, so the Ducks get it back, and this is a good drive here because you run a lot of time on the clock. You Got the ball at your own 20 with six and a half to play, and you run it out except for one final play. This is what we call a bob trap. This comes off of our sweep action. We take it up inside, trying to confuse the linebackers. Ricky does a nice job of picking his way through, and then notice as he gets in contact, notice him wrap up both hands around that football. We talked about that. Again, this is our what we call our four-minute offense. We're trying to run out the clock. Fake the reverse again, and obviously they took the bait. Uh, Ricky does a nice job here. I'd like to see him lower his pad level, but he did not go out of bounds. And again, so that clock keeps running. Big third down and two call here. Yeah, we run the play action pass. Uh, Al Board just asked me if I wanted to run it. I said, I want to get the first down. I want to keep the ball. So we decided to go with a play action pass. And obviously, similar to what we've done, we had been running the ball very effectively. We got a chance to get Josh coming back across the green in the secondary. So you've got to give it up for one final play. Yes, yeah. it's uh, fitting that Kenny Whedon, I mean, how many big plays does this guy make? This is Mike Fouts, the nephew of Dan Fouts, in for one play, trying to throw it deep, and uh, Kenny Whedon seals the victory with the interception. I think uh, we are in our prevent. We've gone out. Uh, we're only a three-man rush. A nice job by Derek Barnes to get pressure on the quarterback. Always worry at that point we didn't buy more time, though, but we had uh, about eight men deployed downfield. I think two of our guys had a chance for this interception, but Kenny comes up with it. I think they put in Faust because I think he has a stronger arm, too. Uh, Alex could have had it. They both got it there, and uh, it's a nice way to end the game. Indeed it is, with the interception, and so the Ducks hold on, and for the coach, his first victory as the Duck headmaster. Good feeling right there. We are joined now by one of the stars of the victory over Utah, senior tailback Ricky Whittle. He rushed for 160 yards, caught six passes for 26 more yards, had a couple of returns for 25 yards, so like 211 yards of all-purpose yardage. 36 times you touched the ball. Not bad for a guy who didn't participate in all of the fall camp. You're a little sore and tired after that? Yeah, <laughs> definitely a little sore. Your thoughts about uh, you know the fall camp? You didn't get uh, a lot of reps just because of uh, certain situations, uh, and then you're called upon to play a huge role in this game. How did you stay so sharp? Uh, coach Borges, he <laughs> kept me uh, getting a lot of reps out there, and uh, the coaches kept on top of me, and basically, and being out there with the team was a big thing for me. It felt real good. Your thoughts, Ricky, about getting a home opener and getting this 100th year of Oregon football off to a good start at home? Oh uh, yeah, I'm just. Uh, Thinking about uh, where I'm going to take my line out to eat this week. I saw that. What is it? For every game over 150 yards, you buy him dinner? Yeah. Well, I hope you buy him dinner 11 or 12 times yeah, this year. <laughs> I hope so, too. <laughs> Me, too. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a unanimous vote right there. Well, thanks for joining us this week. We'll see you next week.